Hey everyone, it's TK Friday. Today it's the Craven Arms in Yorkshire, England. I'll be doing a full edit today. I'll have downloadable PDF notes along with the image to download and follow along with me. I'll be covering freehand burning and dodging in this episode. This is different than last week's burning and dodging with contrast. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Can you believe it? It's TK Friday again, my favorite day of the week. Today, we're working on an image by Nigel Crooks. Thank you, Nigel. And this image was shot at the Craven Arms in Yorkshire, England. You're going to be able to download the image and follow along with me, along with PDF notes of every step of the way. And this is going to be a fun one. I really like this image today. And here's my final results. These are the layers we're going to be making today. A lot of fun stuff in here. And for me, this is the joy of editing every time I pull out the TK plugin for Photoshop. So let's get started. But first, if you don't yet own the TK plugin for Photoshop, it's only $29. Why don't you pick it up and then follow along with me on every TK Friday, get those PDF notes, and we will learn together. Just click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. It'll take you to the TK8 web store where you can purchase videos and so on. But use my promo code DK15 and save 15% off your entire purchase. And now let's get started. Let me just give you a little bit of a background here. Now I'm starting out in Lightroom. Hey, by the way, if you have any images you'd like me to edit on a TK Friday, just click on my contact link. You'll find it in the description of this video at the very bottom. You got to click show more to see the entire description, but scroll down to the bottom and click contact me and we can arrange things and we could get your image edited on a TK Friday. I look forward to that. So this is the image right out of the camera. And after some auto settings, I did some auto settings and then I adjusted the blacks just a little bit. I like to have a pretty flat image going into Photoshop because I do that first move with my balance and contrast. And I find I get really great results when I do that. So you should give that a try. Oh, and I almost forgot. I did a little bit of temperature and tint adjustment and a little bit of vibrance adjustment. And this is what it finally looks like. And of course, I always use a remove chromatic aberrations and enable uh, profile corrections. And then as far as detail, I just took the basic sharpening. I used no noise reduction. And once I got it into Photoshop, I sent it into uh, Topaz Photo AI and just let it do some denoising and any little extra sharpening that it felt it needed. And that was it. Oh, and by the way, I generally always use a linear profile. I didn't on this one just because I didn't have a lot of time and I would have had to download the profile. So I just use the Adobe color profile, but generally I'm going to use a linear profile. One other thing I did a really tight crop on here because see this building over here and this building over here, this car, I didn't want those in there. So once I get this into Photoshop in a sec, you'll see my crop. But then there was a bunch of poles in here and a garbage can and a van or some kind of vehicle here I didn't like. So I went ahead and got rid of all that stuff in Photoshop. And the file that you get will have all that stuff removed. Now, here's what the crop looks like. All right. And you'll notice all that, like the van and everything, the garbage can is gone. I like to do cleanup. I like to take artistic license. You may not like to do that, but... Personally, for myself, I want my images looking as nice as I can get them. And if that means taking out a pole or a garbage can, I will do it. If you've watched my past TK8 tutorials, you know I like to set myself up for success. If there are certain selections that I know I'm going to be using later, I go ahead and save those out as channels. And our first two steps are going to be save a sky as a channel and invert the sky and save that as a foreground channel. But we're going to do that first. Oh, and by the way, do you notice I have a new setup for my TK8 plugin for Photoshop? I have the multi-mask panel here, the TK8 combo here, my properties panel here, my actions are here, my channels are up here now. I can uh, 
even drag this up a little further so you'll be able to see everything clearly i moved my toolbar over to the left and this is all thanks to peter dinnan he left me an email he clicked on my contact form and left me an email and said hey do you want to see what my tk8 workspace looks like and i said sure so he sent me a screenshot and this is pretty much i believe how he has his setup and i like it i'm going to try this out and see how it works let me know in the comment section below what you think of this workspace if you think this is something that you may want to try i'm going to try it and see what i think but i'd like to know your thoughts and maybe you have a special workspace let me know in the comment section below about it now let's save this guy as a channel just come here to the combo or cx panel and click on this icon here photoshop will find our sky for us and then click right here and this will let us save that as a channel i'm going to call this sky and click ok and now we need to invert that selection. There's two different ways to invert. This inverts selections and this will invert a pixel layer. So you want to make sure you use this one. So we're going to invert that. And we're now we're going to click this again to save it. And I'll call this uh, foreground and click OK. And now you'll notice right up here, I have a sky and a foreground channel saved. That's what I mean by setting ourselves up for success. This will help us in the long run to get things done quicker. Next, we want to go ahead and adjust the foreground area separately from the sky. So we could come up to my channels and click on foreground. Now we're going to use a mass calculator. I love the mass calculator. Click on the mass calculator. We're going to intersect that with... You got to X out of here first. We're going to intersect it with a luminosity mask. It's going to be a MIDS 3. You know, I always use MIDS 3. The only reason I use that is because it protects the highlights and shadows from clipping. We're going to click Equal. And now all we need to do is output that to a color grading tool. And now we can make an adjustment. I'll start out with shadows. So click on the shadow block. And I'm just going to bring those shadows back to maybe somewhere right around there. And already it's looking better, isn't it? I just want to make sure I don't block up any shadows and they look good. And now we're going to go to midtones and I think I'll open up the midtones a bit, maybe somewhere right around here. I think that looks pretty good. Now this is a non-destructive workflow. We can always come back later and retweak things, but this is a good starting point. It seems a little too warm. So I'm going to take some of that warmth away by just dragging this block down into the blue section a little bit. You see that? It just looks better, I think. It was looking a little too orange. And now let's go to highlights, and I'll just slightly bring the highlights to the right, just a little wee bit. Now here is our before, and here's our after, and it's only affecting the foreground. Now we set ourselves up for success, so let me X out of the color grading tool, come back to my channels. This time, I'm gonna grab the sky. I'm gonna get a mass calculator again, do an intersection, and don't be afraid of this mass calculator. Once you get onto it, you're gonna love it. And now I'm gonna X out of here, go to luminosity mass and grab that same mid three, click equals, and look at that. I've selected my sky. I'm gonna protect my shadows and highlights from clipping. I'm gonna output that to a color grading tool and we'll make some adjustments. I'll start out with the shadows again. So let me click on the shadow block and just drag this over a little bit just to darken the shadows in the sky, just a tiny wee bit. And let's go to the midtones and pull these over to maybe around there, darkens them up a little. And now for the highlights, I think I'll bring the highlights over a little bit to the left as well. Just to darken up the sky, just a little wee bit. Here is the before and here is the after. And I like that so far. And then I have my before and after action. We could click here. Here's the before and here's the after. So we're moving in a nice direction. After I've clicked that before and after button, I have to go back up to the top of this layer. I don't have that programmed in to do that for me, but you got to be on that top layer. I'm going to go back to this first foreground layer and click on the midtone block. And I think I'm going to pull this color grading a little bit over this way. I think I was a little bit too green there to maybe somewhere right there. Yeah, that looks better. Now let's come back up here. But there it is. That's a non-destructive workflow. Now, the next thing I want to do is just bring these green areas, give them a bit more saturation, not too much, but a bit. A little bit can go a long way. We know we want to select this green 
area. So what we can do is let's exile the color grading tool and a color mask will be perfect for this. So click on this icon and we're going to sample a color. And like right here, I think is good. I want this to have more saturation. So click OK. And now let's go ahead and refine this mask. We have these two circles here. We can broaden this into more green areas or more orange and red areas here. So I'm going to detract from the red areas. So I'm going to pull this, pull this over to the right somewhere. Whoa, right about there. And let's see what happens if I move this over. So I'm going to move this to the left a little bit more. And yeah, something like that. And let's go ahead and lighten this up. This is a brightness slider. And I'm going to lighten it up to about here. I think that looks good. Now let me see if I want to move this in anymore. Now that's as, see, that'll stop. See it bouncing around. That's as far as that'll go. And I think right about there. Let me just play with this one. No, just right there. I think that's going to be good. Now I only want this hill back here. So we could do the mask, the mask. And that's this icon right here. But first we need to grab a lasso tool. You could type L or click this icon on your toolbar. And what we're going to do is just draw a selection. We can get these trees too down in here. Doesn't have to be that accurate because the mask is taking care of things for us. And then what we're going to do is mask the mask. So click this icon and now we can choose either a feather radius or if we click cancel, we won't get any feathering and we really don't need feathering here. So just click on cancel. And now we need to output it to a hue saturation adjustment layer. So click this icon and now we'll make a hue saturation adjustment. Now my properties panel is right here. I'll increase that saturation in those areas to right around right about 19 and I'll make them a little bit more green. I'm just going to drag this slider to the right a little bit just to right about here, five or six. I'm going to settle on five. Now here is the before. And here is the after. So again, the before and the after. And if that's too strong, I may just take that saturation back just a little bit more to maybe right there. But here is the before and here's the after. But it just makes it look a little more green and I like green. The next thing I want to do is just soften up these clouds just a tiny little bit just to give them more of a cloudy look. I mean, they look nice, but a little bit of reverse clarity will work nice. So let's come to TK Actions, and I'm looking for my clarity action. Now, this uses a high-pass filter, and one thing I want to point out about the clarity action, and that is this. A typical high-pass filter is going to give you, you could get little bits of color shifting, but the way Tony Kuiper has made this clarity action, there will be no color shifting whatsoever. So that's really good. And I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to take this pixel radius at 10. Now you can increase this and get different type of clarity effects. When you just want just a minor clarity effect, 10 is really good. So I'm just going to click OK. And that 10 pixel radius gives you an overall sharpening to the image. But I want to do the opposite of sharpening. And so I'm going to invert that clarity action. And to do that, come to the CX or combo panel and not this icon for inverting selections, but this icon for inverting a pixel layer. So click this and it inverts that clarity action. And now my image looks slightly blurry, which is nice. It's beautiful in the clouds, but it's horrible down here. But we could take care of that very easily because remember, we set ourselves up for success. So this is an often overlooked uh, icon on the CX or combo panel. See this icon right here? Click on it and we can apply the sky mask right to this layer by clicking here. And just like that, we have a nice softened sky. Now here is the before and it's really slight. It's just a slight blurring and here is the after. But it just makes those clouds look just a slight bit dreamier. If I went too strong there, like around 20 pixels or 40 pixels, it would have looked unnatural. But this little bit of softening is really beautiful. And I also call this like nuancing the image. You know, you don't have to go crazy in all your adjustments. Sometimes you do want a really dramatic effect, but here I just want a nice, smooth, subtle softening. And now speaking of clarity, how about a little bit of nice clarity on these foreground houses. I think that would be nice. I'm going to grab my object selection tool. Now I'm in the lasso mode and I'm just going to draw a selection around all these houses, even this uh, wall right here. 
Okay, and we'll see what kind of a selection Photoshop can make. I'm going to leave out that building back there, just like that. Now, it does a pretty good job. Now, if you hold your shift key down, or no, I'm sorry, your option key down, we, we can subtract this area from that selection. Like, we'll subtract that. It missed a couple little areas here. That won't really hurt anything. But I want to add this area right in here. So I'm going to hold my shift key to add, and we'll add this area that it missed into the selection. And now we have a pretty good selection. It missed this area right here. This is going to be stubborn. I know that I tried that in my pre-edit. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool type L, hold the shift key down, and we could just go around there. And while we're at it, this little area here that we don't want, we can go ahead and get rid of that. Whoops, I actually added that. So we can go back a step by clicking this icon right here to go back a step. And now hold the Option key down. I leave these mistakes in because I know you'll make them too. I make mistakes all the time. And now we have that selection. Now that we have the selection, let's go ahead and save that as a channel. So let's click right here. And let's give it a name. We'll call it houses. How about that? Because, hey, you know what? They're houses. And click OK. And now that's saved as a selection. Because next, I'm going to get a clarity action. So let's click the TK actions. And when I do that and click on clarity, that selection goes away. But now let's pick uh, an amount of clarity that we want to add. And I want a decent amount of clarity here. So I'm going to come up here right around 16.2 and click OK. Now that adds clarity to the overall image. OK, so here's the before and here's the after. But I love it on the houses. But that same icon that's often overlooked. So click this and let's add the houses. And now we have clarity only on the houses. So here is the before. And here is the after. And if it's too strong, you could take this opacity and pull it back just a little bit. And I might do that. But here it is. Here's the before and here's the after. But doesn't that add a nice little bit of clarity on those houses? Because they are a feature to this image. What I want to do next is close off the bottom of the image and the top to keep the viewer into the frame. And this is done quite often in landscape images. And like I said, it's an effective way of keeping the viewer into the frame. To do this, I'm gonna get a curves adjustment layer, put a black mask on it, and put it in the multiply blend mode. Now, the multiply blend mode is great for darkening things. Next, and this is a technique that I discovered recently, and I showed it on a couple videos back, I believe, and that's to come to luminosity masks. And I'm gonna get, for the bottom, because I want a little more aggressive adjustment. I'm going to get a mids three. This is going to protect my really dark shadows and really rely more on the midtones. But here is what you need to do next. This icon here will load that mask up as a selection. Okay, and you can see we have a selection by the selection indicator. Next, you want to grab a gradient tool. So click on your gradient tool and you want to make sure you have your white swatch up on the top. Right now, I have the black on top. If I type my X key, the white goes to the top. Hold your shift key down to constrain the gradient tool to give you a nice straight line across there. And just drag up to right about here. And see that I have a nice gradient down there. Now, if we take a look at that mask, you can see there's that midtones protecting these shadow areas, which are the darker areas here. It's only really affecting the midtones. So let's go ahead and click this icon again, and now we can see it. But here is the before, and here's the after. Now, if it's too strong, we could pull that back, but I think it looks good. We're going to leave it like that for now. Now we're going to work on the sky. But I want you to notice we still have a selection. We need to get rid of that selection. Click this icon right here to deselect the selection because I'm going to get another curves adjustment layer. And when I do that, I would apply that bottom mask on there, and I don't want that. So get rid of that selection. Click this icon for the curves adjustment layer. Let's put a black mask on it again. And now let's change that to the multiply blend mode and now come up to luminosity masks. And this time, instead of a mids three, I'm just gonna take a lights one. I'll put that to a selection and grab your gradient tool. Make sure you get your gradient tool. And we have white on the top. And by the way, if you click this drop down here and see where it says basics, if you open up basics, you have different types of gradients you can use. I'm using this first one, which is foreground to background. The second one is foreground to transparent. And the last one is black 
white. So I'm using this first one right here. And just like before, hold your shift key down and just drag down to maybe right about here. And that just closes off that top. And let's take a look at that layer mask by clicking the double arrow icon. And as you can see, it's only affecting lights one, which is what we want. Click this again and we have our image back. And now what is next? Usually when I get around this point, I feel like my midtones need to be lifted a little bit. So I'm going to lighten them up a bit, but check this out. I have another selection. We got to get rid of it. So click this icon on the CX or combo panel to deselect. And now I'm going to get a curves adjustment layer. It could be a levels. It could be a brightness. It doesn't matter because all I'm using that adjustment layer for is a blend mode, which is going to be a screen blend mode to lighten, a multiply blend mode to darken. But let's put a black mask on it so we don't really see the effect take place because that blows my mind when I see the image get all light. And now we're going to come to luminosity masks. And I always like to grab a mids one because remember, I just want to lighten up the mid tones a little bit and now let's apply that to the layer by clicking this icon on the multi-mask panel and there it is now here is the before and here is the after and there's no effect that has taken place i made another mistake i told you i make mistakes all the time click on screen because it's still in the normal blend mode okay i forgot to do that i was even following my own notes and i didn't get it right but here's the before and here's the after it's too light so just take the opacity and pull it the whole way off and then slowly adjust it to the right. And when you get to the point where you think it looks right for you, stop there. And I'm thinking right around here, 41%. Here is the before and here's the after. It just lifts up those midtones a little bit. And now everyone, it's time to have some fun. We're going to do some freehand dodging and burning. And this is where you get to be an artist and decide what areas you want to lighten on the image, what areas you want to darken. And this will add depth and dimension. And I'll tell you what, it'll really set your images apart from the crowd. So let's get into some freehand dodging and burning. Or is it Burning and dodging have the same thing, really. I'm going to start with burning. And on the CXR combo panel, this is the burn and this is dodge. And they both have two sides. On the left side, you're going to get a gray layer. That's the one I like to use. So I'm going to click on the left side. On the right side, you get a blank pixel layer. So I'm going to click on the left side. I'm going to get a gray layer in the soft light blend mode for burning. And the panel sets you up with a black brush. As you can see over here, I have a black brush. Now I'm going to start in the sky and I'm going to have a relatively large brush because I'm going to grab some larger areas up in here. Last week I used paint contrast. This time I'm using the traditional dodging and burning way. And this is probably one of my favorite ways of doing it, to be honest with you. I'm going to start with a low opacity of about 10%. And I'm just looking for some darker areas like, and I'll just start burning darker areas. Now, every time you lift your brush and if you paint again, you're going to get a stronger effect. So I'm just painting some of these dark clouds in here and I'm only painting over them once. I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller and go through here and notice how I swirl my brush at times. That helps too to give you a nice, you know, the gradient edges will be much nicer if you swirl. And again, this is free hand. Okay. So let's take a look. Here is the before. And here's the after. So already I really like that. Now I'm going to make my brush smaller. And now I'm going to look for areas that I want to darken up. Like natural shadows like here. I'm going to paint across there once, twice, here and here. And as I said, this will add depth and dimension. And you could get even some of these darker areas down in here. In the trees. Just anywhere you think might look good. But again, this is where your inner artist has to really come out. And you're just looking for areas that you want to darken. I think up here on this hill at the very top, make my brush smaller. And I'm going to hit over this a little bit and maybe in this area. You don't have to hit every area. And sometimes I might even go over a light area if I want to darken it. Like right here, I'm going to darken that whole area right there. I'm going to get this again. And maybe down in here on these rocks over here. I'm going to go a little bit so you can see me, what I'm doing, and then I'll probably pause the video and finish it up and show you the results. But down here in the grass, some of these shadows down in here, I'm going to hit some of these guys out here, all through here, and 
just have fun here. I highly recommend, at least for me, I like to put on some nice soft music and really get caught in this process. To me, this is all part of the joy of editing. I love doing this dodging and burning. And take your time and, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So just go at it. Now, even some of these shadow areas, I'm going to hit these guys in here. That'll make these trees look a little bit more dimensional, like that. Up in here, I'm going to darken that tree a little bit. Get in here and just really have fun. That's the key here. And I said this before, if you're not having fun, why, why even edit an image, right? Hopefully, you're having some fun doing this. But right like that. Let me see what we got so far. Here is the before, and here is the after. But you see that nice dimension happening up here in this hill? I'm going to pause the video, finish this up, and I'll get right back with you. And I am back. Now, this is the before, and are you ready? Here is the after. Now, you have the opacity here. If you went too strong, you could ease that off by pulling back on the opacity. But I think I like it. But if you went too strong in some areas here, get yourself a gray brush. That's what this gray brush is all about. Remember when I was burning and dodging with contrast, we used the eraser tool. But here we can use the gray brush. And I'm at 10%. And you can blend with this. In fact, I'm going to go down to 5%. And to get 5%, type 05 in your keyboard. And if you want to blend the edges and things with that 5%. Now, my whole time I was dodging and burning, I had a 0% hardness brush. So it was very soft. But we could go over areas and tone things down, blend things in a little bit, which is really nice. And that's what this gray brush is all about. The black brush for burning, but the gray brush for erasing. And now you can erase and blend with it, as I said. And the same with the white brush when you're dodging, you can use the gray brush to blend and erase if you've overdone something. But like if I want to tone this down a little bit, I can do that here and here. But that's what the gray brush is all about. But overall, here it is again. Here is the before and the after. But now we get to have some more fun and do some dodging. So come to the CX or combo panel, click the left side of the dodge tool that gives you a gray layer in the overlay blend mode, sets you up with a white brush. And I'm going to go to, let's try 10%. I'm going to get a nice big brush and go up into the sky here and just, you know, give some highlight to some of these clouds. And like I said, don't be afraid to swirl around to keep things loose and free and nice gradient edges, which can be really nice. And don't forget that gray brush. If we overdo something, just switch to the gray brush and tone it down. And you can even jump down to like 0, 0.5 for 5% and be a little more gentle in what you're doing. So you got to think that way. Because you want to add a lot of variation to your dodging and burning. And again, you don't want to hit everything. Okay, so I'm going to make my brush smaller and go back to 10%. And let me... Start this out. I'll zing some light across here and here, and that's exciting to me. These little pockets of light that are shooting through. The lighting was pretty nice in this scene, actually. And right up in here, and again. I'm only doing one time, but I'm going to hit this a second time. And these trees uh, down in here, we could throw some light, do a little kiss of light. That's what I like to call it. A little tiny kiss of light adds depth and dimension, and it's really pretty. Don't do every tree, but just the ones you want. It's all up to you. I'm going to throw some light here. How about make my brush smaller and zing a little bit of light across here. And this is fun. Okay, so right there. And even down in here in some of the grass, we'll throw a little bit of light where some light is catching some of this grass down in here. Like right there. And that's kind of exciting, right? It adds some nice character and it also adds some texture as well, just like in that painting contrast. We added a lot of nice texture, but this will throw, this will give you some extra texture, which is nice. Maybe even on some of this fence here, maybe right here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish it up. You get the idea, right? And I'll get right back with you. And I am back. Now, here is the before, what you see, and now here is the after. But look at the nice depth of dimension again, before and after. Now, let me shut off both burning and dodging. 
Here's without burning and dodging, and here it is with burning and dodging. Now, you could put these two in a group, and then you could have a master opacity to pull back on the entire effect. But I like it. But look at all that nice depth and dimension I have now. Two more things to do, and we're done. I'm going to get an object selection tool. I want to darken the sides of these buildings. I think that'll add some nice uh, effect here. We'll start here. I'll lasso around here. I'll get this one first, and then I'll hold my shift key down to add the next one right here. I love this object selection tool. It does a great job. So there's that one, and now I just have this one over here. Now, when it misses the space, I just grab my lasso tool type L, and then I can get that as well. Remember, hold shift to add to the selection and option or alt to subtract from the selection. Now that we have that selection, it's just a matter of getting a color grading tool. You got to click the plus and there's the mask that we just made from that selection. And all I'm going to do is darken the sides of those buildings, but you got to click on the gray block, just the midtones. Darken up those midtones a little bit. And I think that really helps. Here is the before, and here is the after. One final step. After adding the dodging and burning, I lost a little bit of my darkening at the top to close off the top. So we're going to come to that layer where I closed off the top, which is right here. And all I'm going to do is double it up. Click this icon right here, and that'll make a copy of it. And now it's twice as dark. Here is the before, and here is the after. Now, if that's too strong, we could take the opacity and just maybe ease it off a little bit, but I think it looks pretty good. Here's the before, and here's the after. Now, let's take a look at the overall before and after. We started out here, and we end up here. I'm really happy with this edit. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today, and I hope you give this image a try. Download the image file and the PDF notes. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell notification icon, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing!